interested in doing targeted sequencing? Well, we're here at ASHG and we're sharing some of the new improvements on the AmpliSeq Designer tool. Good morning, Guiying. Good morning. Uh, I understand you have a poster here at ASHG on some of the advancements that you've made for the AmpliSeq Custom Design tool. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, some of the uh, improvements that have been made for any reference genome? Right. Uh, so before, uh, we can only support designs for human and mouse. Uh, but now, uh, we can do the uh, design for uh, more than 10 genomes now. Um, not only that, uh, the customer has the flexibility to upload their own sequence. Uh, and also, if they know the uh, variation points on that sequence, they can also upload at the same time, uh, so that can be utilized in the design. So that uh, gives customer a lot of flexibility there. Oh, great. So customers who aren't working in human or mouse, for example, have a lot more options open to them, uh, not only new references that you've put up there, but also right. they can upload their own reference. That's right. Fantastic. And then um, I understand that there's a couple of different options in terms of the design approach that they use. Right. So there is a, a DNA design, which can be a region and uh, can also be a um, exons from a gene, for example. Uh, for those, uh, generally, uh, it uh, involves two pools. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, a, uh, that's one design strategy. And uh, also, there is uh, some customers that are interested in uh, hotspots, which is uh, pointer mutations. For those designs, a lot of times, the customer only want one pool. So we have a specific uh, design strategy to optimize at a single pool. Uh, so that's the difference between a regional gene design and hotspot design. I see. Can you talk a little bit about uh, why a customer would care whether they had one pool or two pools? Uh, mainly that's a cost. It's a cost. So yeah, with a hotspot where they scattered around, you don't need two pool. Uh, I see. So if you, if you can optimize into one pool, that will be a cost saving. Okay. And I assume with one pool, there's also going to be an improvement in terms of workflow as well. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, great, great. And then I also caught from your poster that there was some improvements uh, or data that you're sharing in terms of specificity. Right, this question had been asked a lot by the customers uh -huh. about the uh, primary specificity. We made a lot of effort to make sure that the primers we pick are like uh, specifically binding to the target, uh, not give a lot of off-target reads. Uh, so we have an algorithm there uh, to ensure that. So yeah, I talked about some details in the poster. Oh, great. And at the end of the day, how does that um, uh, affect the customer? What's the improvement that they'll see? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very obvious. Uh, we, we did a lot of test uh, panels where we can see how we are controlling this, uh, the off-target reads. Great. So it's great. working well. Going, thank you very much uh, for going over your poster. That was extremely informative. Thank you. If uh, you're interested in learning more about the work that Going and his team has been doing for the AmpliSeq Designer tool, uh, please click on the SlideShare link below this video.